Let's imagine a grandmother who takes her little granddaughter into an art museum, has her granddaughter in tow, you know, holding her by the hand, and grandma walks up and looks at some of these amazing uh, paintings that are hanging on the wall and display. Sometimes she has to pick up her little granddaughter so she can get a better look. And uh, grandma just drinks in the sights of these wonderful masterpieces. And after a while, you know, a half hour or so, her little granddaughter kind of gets bored because she's just looking at these images in silence. And so the little girl asked Grandma, why do you look at these so long? And Grandma looks at her granddaughter. She says, well, they speak to me. And uh, you can imagine what the little granddaughter said. She said, I didn't hear anything. I mean, they're talking to you. Uh, what did they say? Well, Grandma picks up her little granddaughter and takes her back to that first, that first painting. This is a painting of a farm. It's a, it's a painting of a farmer out in the field. And Grandma explains how this painting spoke to her. She said, this speaks to me of abundance, of the fact that we have food to eat and where it comes from. And this speaks to me of hard work and labor. It speaks to me of a time of harvest that follows the time of planting and cultivating and how that applies to life and the little girl kind of looks at her grandma and says uh, I didn't hear that but okay so grandma takes her to the next uh, next painting and this is a painting of mountains just scenery beautiful scenery and uh, what is what is this picture saying grandma and grandma says you know it's telling me about uh, fresh air and about the wonderful world in which we live and the marvels of nature and the things that we should be taking uh, with appreciation rather than taking for granted. And uh, the fresh air that we breathe and the, the weather that brings us, uh, well, brings us rain for the farmer. Then she goes on to the next painting, and this is a portrait of a mother and child. Kind of like a Madonna. And uh, what does this one say? Well, this one, she says, speaks to me of your mother, you know, the grandmother's daughter, who is now an adult, when, uh, when she was small and, well, like you. And she goes on and tells a story about how she remembers raising her daughter and all the wonderful memories they had together, just the two of them. And the little granddaughter's starting to catch on now. And so she goes from that portrait to portrait, from image to image, from landscape to landscape, and takes a brief moment and says, this one speaks this, and that one speaks something different. And years go on, the little girl grows up, and her grandma passes away, and grandma dies. And they're sorting through grandma's uh, belongings, trying to decide it what to do with them. And the granddaughter, now you know in her 20s, maybe 30s, comes across a drawer that says art. And she's wondering what artwork Grandma has in that drawer and wonders why Grandma would keep this particular art. How did it speak to Grandma? And wondering, the little girl's wondering now an adult, of course, wondering how this artwork is going to speak to her and maybe if she could hear what Grandma heard. So she opens the drawer. And she's surprised to see inside drawings that drawings that the granddaughter made when she was little, when she was in school. You know, these little crayon drawings, stick figures or whatever. And she looks at those drawings and she understands that she was speaking in silence to her grandmother. And as she looked through, she saw other drawings that were made by the little girl, now adult, her mother when she was a little girl, and how those drawings spoke in silence. So people with autism, sometimes we think that we're silent and nobody is hearing us. They have no idea what we're thinking. But the truth of the matter is, yeah, there are a lot of people like that. But there are other people who see us as portraits. They know that we are speaking, and sometimes we're speaking more profoundly and more loudly then we realize. So here we have, I don't know, maybe uh, six, seven points that I'd like to make. And number one is this. Our silence allows us to notice what other people miss. 
so there is a grandma in silence and she's looking at the uh at the artwork these masterpieces and a lot of people just miss that in fact most people don't even bother to go into the art museum at all because nothing in there will speak to them what speaks to them are things that really make i mean audible noise but we necessarily don't need to make audible noise and yeah i know people with Asperger's syndrome who make a lot of noise but by and large most people with autism are kind of quiet and in our silence in our quietness think of yourself as a portrait and you're speaking to other people and realize that quite frankly most people those uh, people who live in the hive mind the neurotypical hive mind they're not being quiet to listen so they just miss the beauty of your portrait but that's okay. You're speaking to some people, and there's some who appreciate that. But silence also, number two, allows us to listen. It's kind of hard to listen when you're talking, right? So here I am, and I'm speaking. And if somebody were speaking to me, it would disrupt me. So I would have to be quiet and stop talking and hear what they have to say. That's why I come into my little cabin here where it's nice and quiet, and I'm all alone so I can focus, so I can think. And I can listen, and I can study, and I can put together these presentations because, quite frankly, when you are quiet, you are being an artist. And the question is, what, what are you drawing? If your life were a portrait, and somebody were looking at it, and they, they are, what are they saying? What, uh, what story does your life tell? The third thing is silence, like it allows us to listen it also allows us to focus. Now, I don't know about you, but uh, I can't drive with the radio on. I don't even know if cars still have radios or not. They have uh, all kinds of uh, gadgetry and stuff that makes music and makes noise, and I'm all for that. I love music. But when I'm driving, I want to focus on where I'm going, particularly if it's foggy, you know. And I've seen people do this when they're driving down the road. And it gets foggy, or maybe rain comes, or snow, whatever, and they turn down the radio. Why? Because it's distracting. Silence allows us to focus as we steer our way through life. Number four is silence allows us to sense a form of direction. So, when you're going someplace, sometimes out walking in the woods, you need to stop, be quiet, think about where you're going. Because I used to love to walk out in State Park. And my mind would uh, just kind of go off on its own. But sometimes I forget where I am and I'd have to stop and think and be quiet. Why? Well, I don't know. It just allows me to think. So, uh, you know, when you're going through life, sometimes you need to get a sense of direction. The fact that you are quiet as a person with autism speaks volumes of you. Because you are a person who has a sense of direction. People, you know, I was, uh, this story just comes to mind, or this memory comes to mind. A few years ago, I had my business in the downtown area of the city, and uh, I'd gone to the post office, walking back to my office, and I was following a couple uh, middle-aged women, and they were talking back and forth, just chattering, and they came to the intersection, the red was light, the sign was flashing, do not walk, and they just walked down the intersection. You know, I'm amazing they didn't get, get run over, and they didn't even notice. They didn't even notice. And what I should have done is shout it out to them, but uh, it didn't occur to me at the time. But uh, they didn't have a sense of where they were going or their surroundings. But when you're quiet, you sense your surroundings. You've seen, you know, dogs do that. Where they get quiet and they perk up their ears, well, most any critter will do that because silence gives us a sense of direction, gives us a sense of our surroundings, gives us a sense of our environment, kind of protects us, right? Particularly that's um, number five, is silence allows us to see danger. So uh, the woman was, the grandma was looking and seeing the images and she was hearing as they spoke to her. But also sometimes when we're quiet, it's just the opposite. We are hearing when nothing is being spoken because we are listening for opportunity. We may be listening for danger. Number five is we listen for opportunity. We listen for danger. 
we listen to others, we listen to all of the things that are going on outside of us that are obstructed. When we're making noise, and even when others are making noise, number six is silence allows us to hear our inner dialogue. Yeah, that's why I would take walks in the woods. I don't go out in the woods anymore because I fell over too many times. But now I walk through the neighborhood. You know, we live in kind of a rural area, so I can take long walks. I typically walk three miles every day, and I don't take anything. I don't take anything to listen to. I mean, some people do that. I'm fine with it, but I'd rather listen to my thoughts. In fact, some of the ideas that I have making these videos come to me while I'm out there walking. So it's not like I'm doing nothing. My mind is engaged. There's an inner dialogue going on. So it gives me an opportunity to think of the things, uh, things through life, opportunities in life. And then finally, silence allows us to show others how to listen. Again, there you're you're a portrait, you are a picture, you are a painting. You are something in silence for others to see and through their sight they get you speak to them through your silence and uh, so they get to learn to listen just like you do and that makes you a valuable person. In the lower right-hand corner there should be a circle. If you click on that, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and join our family the upper left-hand corner. There should be a rectangle. If you click on that, you can keep on listening. That is our library of past videos, and we will see you all next time.